Because it's Heinz. The H.J. Heinz Company, makers of 57 varieties of fine food for over 80 years, present the amusing described adventures of Ozzie and Harriet, starring America's favorite young couple, Ozzie Nelson and Harriet Hilliard. Nelson is on his way home from downtown. Oh, he's the fellow with the brown top coat and no hat walking over to the bus stop. Seems to be in quite a cheerful mood, too. Just listen to that happy little melody. Say, that sounds pretty good. In fact, I wouldn't admit this to Ozzy, but... Oh, say, no wonder it sounds so good. Ozzy's not the one who's singing at all. It's that fellow walking just behind him. The man with the dark overcoat and the black felt hat. Oh, now he's walking over toward Ozzy. Wonder what he wants. I beg your pardon, sir. Uh, yes. Could you tell me, please, is this where I catch the bus for Hudson Avenue? Uh, yes, that's right. It, it stops right here. Oh, thank you kindly. Not at all. <laughs> oh, I, I'm sorry. My my singing probably disturbs you. No, 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 not at all. You are very polite, but you can't fool me. I, I can tell by your expression that you are not a Haydn enthusiast. The uh, Haydn? Yes. I'm afraid my singing is not what it should be. It's, it's his 93rd in G major. Oh, oh, yes, yes, of course, the, the 93rd. No, no, wait a minute. Uh, uh, it's, it's his, his 94th. Oh, yeah, that's right, you're right, the 94th. You, you kind of took me by surprise. <laughs> oh, so you do know it. Now, that's very clever. I wasn't sure you recognized it. Uh, what's that? The Surprise Symphony, just as you said. Haydn's Surprise Symphony. Oh, well, I, I wasn't too sure, to be honest with you. <laughs> I've always felt that Haydn must have had a delightful sense of humor. Uh, in the Andante, pianissimo, uh, more pianissimo. And then, the sudden shock of the drums. It, it's not difficult to understand why he called it his Surprise Symphony. Oh, oh, yes, yes. Well, that's Haydn for you. <laughs> It's so refreshing to find someone familiar with his works. Oh, I'm really not what you'd call familiar with his works. I enjoy them naturally. You're perhaps a Beethoven man. Well, yes, Beethoven. Or perhaps the Baroque. A little Bach, perhaps. Oh, yes, and, and Bach, too. I thought so. A man of delicate musical taste. No, well, I wouldn't say that. I don't mean to sound presumptuous, but uh, I thought you might be interested to know that my cousin is Igor Papavanavinsky. Oh? <laughs> the noted conductor, as, uh, as if you didn't know. Oh, of course. The, the noted conductor. He's conducting the symphony at the auditorium tomorrow night. We have read about this in, in the paper, no doubt. Oh, yes, yes, at, at the symphony concert. Oh, sure. I have just come from the rehearsal. The concert will be magnificent. They're going to do several of Chopin's exciting compositions for the piano. Tchaikovsky's sixth for those who want a good cry. And, and closing with a stirring Bach fugue. Oh, is that so? Oh, that Bach. The intricacies of his inspiring fugues are fascinating. Pum, 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 da dum pum, 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 Intriguing, isn't it? No, absolutely. I can see the emotional reaction surging within you at the mere mention of those immortals. Permit me... It's a pleasure to meet a man of such excellent taste. Oh, thank you. It's been a pleasure meeting you, sir. And I hope we will meet again soon. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Don't lose that excellent taste, sir. Thank you. I'll try not. Hello, dear. Hi, Pop. Oh, hello there. 
are things downtown? Oh, fine, fine. Say, did you know that they're having a symphony concert right here in town tomorrow night? Oh, yes, at the auditorium. The Women's Club is sponsoring it. Yeah, the uh, noted conductor, uh, Igor uh, uh, Papa, uh, uh, the Papa something or other. Popsicle? No, no. Papa Benavinsky. Yep. Igor Papa Benavinsky. That's the guy, yes. I think his friends call him Pops for short. Are you a good friend of his? No, not personally. I, I know his cousin, however. That is, uh, uh, casually. Well, I didn't know that. You never told me. Well, actually, I just met him today. We struck up an acquaintance while we are waiting for the bus. A very interesting man. Is he a musician, too? Yeah, I rather imagine so. He's quite a music lover. We had a very long, interesting conversation. Do you like music, Pop? Oh, yes. I, I think music plays a very important part in our cultural life. I got some swell new records, Pop. Oh, good. I'd like to hear them. My favorite is the Tin Roof Blues by Pete Daly. <laughs> Stuff. Well, of course, that, that's music of a type. You know, Harriet, I was thinking on the way home on the bus, it's a shame to let such a wonderful opportunity go by. What do you mean? Well, I mean, have a concert and a great conductor right here in town, not take advantage of it. You mean you'd like to attend the concert? Oh, yes, I thought it might be nice. Well, this is wonderful. You mean you'd like to go, too? Well, this sounds silly, but I've been trying to figure out a way to talk you into going. Well, how about that? Well, it works out swell. Then maybe I'd better phone for tickets, huh? They may be sold out. Well, that's just it. We've already got the tickets. Mother sent them over this morning. She got them at the women's club. Oh, that's great. The only thing, though, it's formal. You'll have to put on the old tuxedo. Well, I, I think that ought to be fun. I guess I'll have to get a new dress. I did see a rather nice one down at Dorothy Beals last week, though. Well, then you've got no problem. Well, it'll do us good to get dressed up for a change. From what I understand, it's going to be a wonderful concert. Some piano concertos by uh, Chopin one of Tchaikovsky's symphonies, and uh, some uh, Bach fugues. Sounds fine. Those old Bach things uh, are really inspiring. Is that Bach? Uh, yes, I, I, I believe it is. So that's where they got that name. Uh, what name? The Bach. <laughs> No, 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 no. No, that was one of the fugues, the Bach fugues. You've heard of them? They were famous. I heard of the Hatfields and the McCoys. No, no, they were the fugues. This is the fugues. So this just goes to show you how little you know about your own husband. I never dreamed you were interested in classical music. Oh, sure. I think there's nothing more inspiring than a, than a good classical concert. I had surprised you? Yes, it does. Say, that's a coincidence. You're using the word surprise. Did you know why they called that Haydn symphony the surprise symphony? No, I don't believe so. They play very soft in one place, and then the guy hits a big crash on the drums, and it surprises everybody. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Ricky, stop talking silly. Why was it called that, dear? Ricky? Yes, sir? Why don't you run along outside and play? <laughs> Hey, Barney. Oh, hi, Oz. I was looking for you a little while ago. What's the matter? Couldn't you cart the ash cans out by yourself for a change? Now, is that a way to talk to the guy who's going to save your life? Well, thanks, but I've already carted mine out. Uh, you'll thank me, all right, when I warn you what's going on. Well, what do you mean? There's an ugly movement underway to get us to take the wives to some horrible concert they're having at the auditorium tomorrow night. Real long-haired stuff. Oh, is that so? Now, I figure if we stick together, we can beat this thing. See, all we have to do is establish that we've got a previous engagement, like an important bowling match or, or a committee meeting. How about it, Oz? No, I'm sorry, Thorny. <laughs> what did you say, Oz? I said, I'm sorry, but personally, I'm going to the concert. Oz, well, aren't you feeling well? <laughs> I've never felt better. Well, then what's this all about? It's very simple. Harriet and I are going to the concert. In fact, we have our tickets already. You mean to say you want to trudge all the way downtown in this freezing weather and sit in a drafty hall when you could be sleeping just as well at home? Thorny, the trouble with you is you just don't appreciate good music. Oh, I have nothing against the classical stuff. In fact, I think it's fine. But I just like to enjoy it sitting at home where you can turn it off if you want to. You're probably the type who'd fall asleep in the auditorium and then snore through the whole concert. I would not. I happen to be a very quiet sleeper. <laughs> 
just the type Haydn wrote that surprise symphony for. But I don't suppose you'd know anything about that. Please tell me, I. Well, sir, it was symphony number uh, 96 or, or 94, or uh, was it 49? Make it 57. That's the pickle symphony. <laughs> Anyway, they play real softly for a while, and then they hit a big, loud bass drum and wake everybody up. That's why they call it the Surprise, Haydn's Surprise Symphony. That's very interesting, Oz. Now, I've got a surprise for you. The guy's real name wasn't Haydn at all. He changed it. Well, what do you mean? Well, he gave his first concert under his real name, Joe Glockenspiel. <laughs> okay, Thorny. And the concert was such a flop that he's been Haydn ever since. <laughs> See you later, Maestro. Ozzie and Harriet will be back in just a moment. Symphonic strains are coming to you direct from the Nelson living room. Will you look at that stack of records on the floor? I guess Ozzy's giving his family their first lesson in music appreciation. that Beethoven really knew how to write music. The record says it's by Richard Wagner. <laughs> oh, 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 yes, David. Naturally, I, I know that particular piece is by uh, Wagner. That, that's pronounced Wagner, son. I simply said that Beethoven knew how to write music, too. <laughs> Let's see if I can find one of his numbers for you. Hey, here's a record by a bunch of fathers. A bunch of fathers? Yeah, the Boston Pops. Ricky, the Boston Pops aren't a bunch of fathers. They're called the Boston Pops because... <laughs> Harry, why are they called the Boston Pops? Because they're a bunch of fathers. <laughs> I'm sure there must be another reason. Let's see what else we have here. Uh, what would you boys like? I'd like to be excused, please. Don't you want to hear any more records? I think it's pretty darn interesting to get an opportunity to listen to really great music. Heck, we've had those records for a long time. Well, it, it hasn't been too long. Here, now here's one by, uh, by, uh... uh <laughs> Tchaikovsky. I'll get it. Just a minute. I'll help you. I guess the boy's a little too young to appreciate this type of music. Oh, I think it's wonderful. Oh, I do, too. Hello, David. Hello, Ricky. Hi, Mr. Oh, it's Clara. Hi, Harriet. Oh, hi, hi Clara. Hello, Clara. Oh, my goodness. Look at all the records. I hope I'm not interrupting anything. Oh, not at all. Not at all. I'll turn off the record player. Or you boys can run on outside if you like. Okay, Mom. See you later. Bye, Miss Randall. Okay, goodbye, boys. Uh, Ozzy. Yeah? I hate to sound like I'm rushing you out the door, but hadn't you better get your tuxedo over the cleaners? Oh, yeah, that's right. Will you excuse me, Clara? Oh, sure. Go ahead, Ozzy. I'll be back in a little while. Okay. <laughs> but, goodness sake, Harriet, don't tell me Ozzy's actually going to concert with you. He most certainly is. Well, I don't know how you do it. I practically had to resort to physical violence with my Joe, and that's the honest truth. Come on now, Harriet, what's your secret? Oh, there's no secret. It was all Ozzy's idea. I was wondering how I could talk him into it when he came up with the suggestion himself. And you didn't use just a teensy, weensy bit of persuasion? Like maybe a step over toe hole or something? <laughs> no, I crossed my heart, Claire. Well, it's awfully hard to believe. Joe really raised the roof. He said he never enjoys those things. 
Well, I told him you're not supposed to enjoy this. You're just supposed to sit there and sop up some culture. <laughs> you know, the more I think of it, the more I realize that Ozzy's attitude really is amazing. Did Joe finally agree to go? Yes, yes, he did. But I got a hunch he figured he'd talk me out of it at the last minute. Well, why do you say that? Well, while I was going through his pants pockets last night with uh, nothing special in mind, just a routine checkup. <laughs> What are they? Two tickets for the wrestling matches. You think he figures on switching your plan? Something like that, yes. Now, whatever it is here, you take them, Harriet, and that'll definitely remove the temptation. Well, what'll I do with them? Well, I don't care, honey. Get in the way if you can. I just don't want them around the house. Okay, Claire, I'll give them to somebody. Thanks, honey. That big fat husband of mine is going to get some culture and refinement if I have to hog time and drag him to the concert. And that's the honest truth. <laughs> Oh, Clara, just a minute. I want to show you something. It's a new dress I got for the concert. Look, how do you like it? Oh, hey, that's beautiful. Isn't it so? Thanks. I've been drooling over it at the store window for about a week. Well, I can see why. Well, I think I'll be running along, honey. I'd still like to know how you made Ozzy think he wanted to go tonight. I guess I just can't convince you, but I still insist it was all his own idea. Well, okay. Goodbye, Harriet, honey. Goodbye, Clara. I still say you really know how to handle your husband. <laughs> okay. And that's the honest truth. Did you take your tuxedo down to clean it? Oh, sure, quite a while ago. I'm going down to pick it up in a few minutes. Uh, Ozzy? Yeah? Are you sure you really want to go to the concert tonight? Well, of course. Why, don't you? Oh, yes, certainly. I, I just thought you might have changed your mind. Clara Randolph gave us two tickets to the wrestling matches, and it'd be perfectly all right with me if you'd rather go... Harriet, what is this? Believe me, I want to go to the concert. You do for sure now. Yeah. Well, wasn't it my idea that we go? Yes, it seemed that way. I just don't want you to feel that you have to go on my account. I mean, you're sure you're going because you want to go. Well, of course. Oh, fine. Then it's all settled. What was this about two wrestling tickets? <laughs> oh, I told Clara I'd get rid of them for her. You know anybody who might want them? Other than Joe Randolph, of course. Well, sure. Where are they? Right there on the desk. They're in an envelope marked wrestling tickets. Oh, yeah. Here they are. Yeah, I'll give them to somebody. Are you sure you wouldn't Harriet, rather... Harriet, I'm positive. So help me, I want to go to the concert. I'm all for it. I think I'll enjoy it. Now, that's very simple, isn't it? Yes, it's very simple. Just awfully confusing. Holy smoke! Was something wrong? I didn't know you had a suit like that. What do they call them? Well, this is my tuxedo. Haven't you ever seen a tuxedo before? There's a guy on television that always wears one. He sells dog food in it. <laughs> well, a lot of people wear tuxedos. Personally, I think they look very nice. Do you like to wear them? Yes, I do. I, I try to wear mine whenever I can. I'm 11 years old, and this is the first time I've seen it. <laughs> I've worn it lots of times. You were probably in bed. It sure looks uncomfortable, boy. No, not at all. It's the same as any other suit. How come you're wearing it tonight? Well, everybody wears tuxedos to a symphony concert. It's a funeral... It's a formal affair. <laughs> well, how do you like my new evening dress? Oh, that looks beautiful, Harriet. Oh, thank you. Are you about ready? Yes, sir. All set. Have you got the tickets? Yeah, right here in my pocket. Oh, where are we sitting? I forgot to look. No, just a second. Oh, they're very good seats. The six row ringside. That <laughs> ringside? Ozzy, let me see those. Oh, for goodness sake, these are the tickets to the wrestling matches. You mean I gave away the tickets to the concert instead? Evidently you did. Oh, never mind, dear. Harry, believe me, I don't know how it could have happened. The envelope I took distinctly said wrestling tickets. I'm positive it did. 
Here, you've got the envelope. See what it says. That's okay, dear. What's done is done. Let's forget about it. Harriet. Yes? Is it possible that you deliberately put the concert tickets in the envelope marked wrestling tickets so that I'd give away the wrong ones? Well, it's not only possible. It's exactly what happened. <laughs> oh, you can't fool me, dear. I knew that you didn't really want to go. How can you say that? I was looking forward to it. You were? Well, I, I was interested in seeing it. Honestly? You know, this is strange. I thought I was, but now that we can't go, I, I must admit I'm not very unhappy about it. <laughs> in fact, I, I'm quite pleased. I guess I was just kidding myself. Yeah, that's what I thought. I mean, I, I haven't anything uh, against concerts, except that... Well, when you analyze them, they are a little on the phony side. Don't be silly. How do you figure that? Well, for instance, all those musicians. They've been playing that same music for years and years. They know it by heart. Yet they sit up there and make believe they're reading the notes so carefully. They're probably reading racing forms. <laughs> well, that's ridiculous. They have to watch the conductor. Oh, Harriet, that part is just showmanship. Do you know how a guy becomes a conductor? When a guy studies for years and years and just can't learn to play any instrument, they make him the leader. <laughs> Actually, the musicians would do much better if he didn't show up, if he went to the wrong <laughs> studio. <laughs> okay, you win. Sure. The whole thing is just a big happy fraud. Harmless, perhaps, but I think it's ridiculous for us to waste our time watching something that's such an obvious fake. I may be old-fashioned, but personally, I just can't stand things that aren't on the level. So come on, let's go to the wrestling matches. It's okay with me. Gee, you make me feel awful selfish, though. I I'd hate to think that I'm talking you out of this. I know how much you wanted to go to the concert. Well, just so you won't think I'm too noble, I'll let you in on a little secret. I never really wanted to go to the concert either. But you said you did. I know, and I tried hard to convince myself, but actually I was only looking for an excuse to buy this new evening gown. It is beautiful. Well, you'll get another chance to wear it. Say, if we're going to the wrestling match, we better change our clothes. Oh, do we have to? I just hate to change this beautiful dress. Well, we can't wear these things. I'd look like the ring announcer. <laughs> yes, I guess you're right. Still, now that I've struggled into these pants, it seems like a shame to waste the effort. You look very smart, too, dear. Oh, thank you. I've never seen you look prettier. You know, the more I think of it, the wrestling matches aren't exactly my idea of a big evening. Look, I'd like to make a suggestion, if you don't mind my changing my mind. You mean you want to go to the concert after all? Well, not exactly. But I noticed in the paper that Pete Daly and his Dixieland band are opening at the Barrel House Cafe tonight. Let's go. Ozzy and Harriet will be back in just a moment. After all, your cousin is the conductor. True. But then a man has to make a living. Besides, I've heard my cousin conduct before. <laughs> conduct. <laughs> he doesn't know how to play an instrument, so they give him a big stick to wave around such fraud. <laughs> See, Harriet, what did I tell you? Ozzy. Yeah? You know, I just had a horrible thought. What's that? Whoever you gave those tickets to thinks they're for the wrestling matches. Hey, that's right. Oh, and the poor guy is going to end up at the concert. Yeah. Oh, this is terrible. <laughs> Relax, dear. Well, who did you give them to? Will you stop worrying, Harriet? A little culture will do Thorny good. <laughs> Join again next week for another adventure of Ozzy and Harriet, presented by the 
the H. J. Hines Company, and starring Ozzie Nelson and Harriet Hilliard. And remember, Hines soups are condensed. You get twice as much soup by adding an equal part of milk or water. That suits me fine. Me too. I like a lot, boy. Appearing in support of Ozzie and Harriet were their two sons, David and Ricky Nelson, John Brown, Mary Jane Croft, Leon Belasco, and yours truly, Vern Smith. Original music was composed by Ludwig von Beethoven, Richard Wagner, Joseph Haydn, and Billy May. So long, folks. This is Ozzy saying goodnight for the four Nelsons and the 57 Variety. It's holiday time again, and that means mincemeat pie. For the best you ever made, get rich, spicy, fully prepared Heinz mincemeat. And don't forget old-fashioned Heinz plum pudding or the lighter Heinz fig pudding. They're ready to heat, serve, and enjoy. Now a listening reminder. Stay tuned for drama and suspense on Mr. District Attorney. This program came to you from Hollywood. America is sold on ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.